Welcome to the physics lab for my electric car demonstration. I have two electric cars. They're absolutely identical, except if we run this blue one, you can see it creeps along kind of like that. And if we run this red one, it goes really fast. In fact, the light blinks. They're identical, except for the color. And uh, let me hit fast forward so you can see me do this really quick. You see I have just one battery in place where it should have two. And I've got this bolt, which is connecting in place of the second battery. Let me fast forward again and put that back together. All right. Now the question is if I put these in a pull-off tournament, which one is going to win? Make your predictions while I connect up our fabulous apparatus. I believe I need to connect the underside so it's pulling down a little bit lower and doesn't uh, flip it over. All right, you want to see uh, my YouTube channel now has t-shirts available. This is physics major. Don't try it at home. You can order this uh, down below the video. Support the channel. Uh, tell me what you think of it. Uh, there's also a college don't try this at home. And blue one on, red one on. See, even though the red one's wheels are turning much faster, it loses to the blue one. The blue one's got a grip. Now it's interesting, if I give the red one a little bit of a push, it can start to take a head. But that slow and steady blue one wins all the time, even though the tires aren't turning as fast. If I give the red one some more weight, it gets more friction on the table and it consistently takes off. Now this blue one was very slowly winning. If I give it more weight, it really wins out. With that extra battery in there, the red one is just a little bit heavier. But with the way this slips, even with a faster turning speed, the red one can't hold on. Let's see, if I give it 100 grams, let's see if that's enough to make it even. by 50 grams. By 20 grams. 40 grams. Pretty close to balance there. Got 20 grams over here. It has a little more friction. So you can see with identical tires, or maybe nearly identical tires, and about the same weight, there's no clear winner based on what the motor's doing. You can see we've got more voltage here. The light on this one lights up, and this light doesn't light up. But if I get more friction on the tires, and I can do that by increasing the mass, so the mass is pushing down on the table, but pushing down on the table helps it grip more. And if I add some mass, one of them, it gets much more friction and is able to win this tug of war. The tires on this are turning maybe twice as fast, maybe not quite twice as fast, but much faster, so this should be able to put in much more power. And if I get it a much larger mass, it takes off really fast. Not quite as much mass. It doesn't get quite the acceleration. If I get this one more mass, it's gonna go until it gets really going there. What's the upshot? The Tesla test, well, it was kind of faked. The heavier car, given the same tires, is gonna win that. 
as long as they're not slipping. That looks like a pretty fair match there, doesn't it? All right. And if you don't want to try this at home, come over to my house. Thanks. Um, what I realized is going on, when this is spinning, when the tires are slipping, the coefficient of friction goes way down. And you'll notice this if you're uh, accelerating your car on a slippery road. If you really punch the accelerator, it's easier for that tire to break free. And once it breaks free, it's not sticking to the road as well. So that's a coefficient of kinetic friction. So as it's sliding along, it uh, slides much more easily. Of course, I've got something else here. This is another piece of metal. So metal against metal, that's probably going to be pretty slippery, but let's see what happens. We tilt it up slowly, and at some angle, it slides down. So that's the angle where it slides down. Let's go a little below that angle. It stays in place. If I give it a push, though, it's going to keep moving. So this, this is, at this angle, it should stay. But if I set it moving, it will keep moving because the kinetic friction, that is the sliding friction it feels as it's moving, is going to be a little less than if it's just sitting still. So let's see if that's true. You can see if it even accelerated a bit once it broke free. So I believe that's what's going on with the cars. This one goes faster. It spins its tires, and once it breaks free, it just keeps moving. This one is going slower, and I didn't mention this before, but I made this table a little bit slick so I could do this. These tires were sticking too well, so I've got a little bit of glycerin that I smeared on here, and I need to clean it off before we have lamb in here. So just like that, I've got kinetic friction, the wheels are slipping. If I have a little more weight, maybe a lot more weight, it can pull it. These wheels are going to pull more slowly. They're not going to break free, and you're going to have a more static friction. So let's see. So by turning slowly, this is able to get more force. Again, I don't need much more. And did you see that really interesting case? What happened there is I needed this much more weight to get this to pull it when the tires weren't spinning, but when the tires were spinning, I needed this smaller weight. So with just a little more friction on this side, if these tires are spinning, they're actually going to break free. And, and if you don't want to try this at home, come over to my house. Thanks.